What's up, people? How you guys doing today? Hope you guys are blessed. I know I am. Um, let's get into this video, man. There's quite a few things I want to touch on. So, um, good weekend for football. Very good weekend for football, I have to tell you. Um, I enjoy both of these games, uh, both of these um, the, uh, conference championship, championship games. Um, it kind of went it and kind of went sort of the way I saw it. <laughs> um, but uh, let's get into it. Let's just get into it. So the first game, Bengals and KC. So um, I picked KC to win the game. But what I did tell you guys was this, that um, this Kansas, this Cincinnati team was not scared of the moment, okay? That they was gonna fight to the end. That this was gonna be a ball game, okay? I use all those cliches, and um, that's what occurred. So, Kansas City comes out, you know, real hot. It's, was to, it's what I expected. I really expected them to um, come out strong, to play well, and to really hold off Cincinnati at the end. That's that's how I thought this was going to play out. I thought Kansas City was going to get, I didn't think, a, what was it, an 18-point lead at some point, right? I wasn't thinking an 18-point lead, but I was expecting at least a touchdown, maybe 10 points, right? And um, Cincinnati would work, it way, work their way back into the game, and at the end, it was going to be a dramatic finish. That's kind of how I thought it was going to play out. And um, so... Casey came out real hot, right? I think, wasn't it like the first three drives that scored touchdowns, right? They looked unstoppable, right? Mahomes was playing, like I said, he's playing at a different level. And um, he just, he did, a, he did a fantastic job early part of this game. Fantastic job, right? Um, the kind of job we expected from, uh, from his level, from, from the quality of quarterback that he is. Along with his defense, you know, his defense, um, I think it was a combination of two things. I think they were playing um, Chase, um, they were bracketing in Chase, and they refused to let him hurt them, okay, which was a great strategy. But what I told you also, I've been saying this whole playoffs, uh, Cincinnati has a great wide receiving core. They have a great connection between Morrow and Chase. But this they are four guys. And if you want to include um Mixon, there are five guys that are very capable weapons. Right? So you pay attention to Chase and you refuse to let him beat you, and you're allowing other people to to do uh, um to do their jobs, okay? And, and not necessarily beat you, but to move the ball down the field. And that's what happened. You, you, they struggled, but you see that what, what I saw was he was still able to get drives going um, with using his other weapons, right? Now, there wasn't resulting in touchdowns, right? I think in the first half, they only got 10 points. But you saw that they were capable of moving the ball regardless to how they were KC was defending Chase okay and I think that was key later on down the road all right so I think this game really turned around and I think it was kind of obvious in the, the the end of that uh, first half when they got that little screen and they was able to get a touchdown off that screen that bred a whole lot that, that it pushed it pushed a whole lot of uh, um, uh, energy and momentum into this um, Cincinnati team. Okay, and what I thought was not going to be able to happen happened. That Cincinnati defense made a difference, and I didn't think they would. I didn't think that they were going to be capable of stopping Mahomes. And what they did at the end of the first half, that last drive. For KC, the way they was able to keep them out of the end zone, and in essence, you know what I think was a bad decision, right? Not even allowed them to get a field goal, 
right? I think that that was a, a huge momentum shift going into halftime. Huge momentum shift, right? Um, KC looking for a kill shot right there. They were, you know, being very aggressive. I think you take the points. I think you go going to half. You, you maintain your dominance. You, you know, you would have put up 24 points, you know, in the first half. You go in there feeling good, perhaps a little disappointed, but you're still going there with points, of, putting points on the board, and um, making it very difficult for this team to come back. You know, um, but you know you got to stop. I mean, uh, Cincinnati got to stop. KC goes in the locker room. They still have to feel good about what they did in the first half, right? Um, but uh, obviously, something happened. Something happened. You you had a team that came out in that second half in Cincinnati that was determined. Now, when I made the comment last week about how Burrow and Chase and these veteran defensive players they brought in changed the culture of this team and, 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 and pumped a mentality that we are not going to be lost regardless to what position that we're put in. That we are, we are the type of team that's never going to quit. We're going to fight to the end, and we're going to figure things out. Give us an opportunity, and we'll figure things out. The defense gave the offense opportunities, and the offense, they played great complimentary football that second half. And I think, it, the, I think the key to that was the relationship and the mentality that Burrow and Chase brings to the team and the veteran players on that defensive team, defense side of the ball. Also, and I want I don't want to get this lost, I think Mixon did a great job in leading this team in that second half. Okay? So let's talk about it, right? So the second half, um, you know, you play it, they both teams are playing hard. But you see, I think, you just slowly saw the momentum just shifting. It, it, it definitely shifted at the end of the first half. But in that third quarter, you could just sense that Cincinnati is not on the same page. They do not feel, they don't have that confidence they had coming into this ball game. And I saw an opportunity. They were not putting up points per se, but I saw a switch. I said, man, this game is going to be interesting the second half because I see Cincinnati having that fire and having that efficiency and the opportunities to change this game, to come back in this game. You know, all they needed was a few opportunities. And, and they came about. So you, you, you talk about, look, the interception, the first interception by Mahomes, that's a freakish thing, you know. Um, I'm sorry, guys. That's a freakish thing, right? I think it was a screenplay they were trying to set up. Ball gets tipped, and um, defensive lineman, you know, gets the interception. It's a freakish play, but it just shows you how active those guys on the line was, how how focused they was on trying to make a um a, a difference in this game, and it happened. It happened. You get you give. That's what I mean about complimentary football. The defense gave the, op the uh, offensive opportunity, and they did not let them down. They did not let them down. Um, Murrow gets the ball to chase. There it is. You see what I'm saying? Um, then you come in, you, 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 you just saw, man, when they tied that game, when they got the touchdown, and they, tied, they got the two-point conversion and tied the game, I, I you know, I'll be honest. At that point, I say this is anybody's game. This is anybody's game, you know. And and what I think was really telling, when KC got tied, you would have expected them to come out and put some points on the board, a field goal, do something, right? That Cincinnati defense really stepped up. And I didn't think they were capable of doing it. I'll be totally honest with you. I was truly wrong when I said that Cincinnati wasn't going to get enough stops to make a difference. And I was wrong because they did.
They did exactly what they needed to do. They just need to give this offense a little, op uh, just a, a, a few opportunities, and that's what that's what that's what occurred. That's what occurred. So you go into overtime. So this game, you know, winds up tied. Um, you go into overtime, right? And then you think, okay, this is what I thought. All right, I'll be honest with you. This is what I thought. Just like in the Bills game, okay? I said, whoever gets, whoever wins this coin toss wins the game. That's what I said. I'll be totally honest with you. That's exactly what I said because in my mind, I'm like, Mahomes and this crew is not going to disappoint. They may not have any fish. They may not have had any fish in the second half. But I said, man, if they get up, if they get an opportunity to put that kill shot, they were gonna do it, right? Um, what I didn't account for <laughs> was that this Cincinnati defense was gonna continue to answer the bell, was gonna continue to play that complimentary football we always talk about. So I just didn't give me. I just didn't think the Cincinnati defense had it in them, and boy. Was I wrong? I was totally wrong. Okay? I was wrong with my prediction. But I warned you guys. I warned you guys that this I warned you guys that this team was capable. I told you they were capable. Okay? So um you go and you get um you know uh, Casey gets the ball and um the first few plays, I'm like, man, this this they're not very efficient. But you know what? This KC, man, you going they're gonna pull it out, right? So on that third play, third down play, uh, cause you know they, uh, Eli Apple, <laughs> he had a chance to seal it. That was a he had a, he had a pick six just laid in his lap, right? And when when that and when that didn't occur, I'm like, well. That was that was Cincinnati's opportunity, and it just got wasted. Surely, Mahomes is not going to put the ball in harm's way again, and they're going to get they're going to get down this field. And at the time, I'm like, well, you know what? They might not get a touchdown to end this game, but I surely they'll get a field goal range. Surely, right? <laughs> he throws an interception. And listen, I've heard some people say that that wasn't really a big um, issue or, or a big mistake, right? In, in essence, it was a punt. I do not agree. I do not agree with that theory because what you did was you put him in a you put uh, Cincinnati in a situation. All they needed was thirty yards. You know, you now you know at this and you know in the overtime situation. They once they both get a chance to touch the ball, field goal wins, right? So Cincinnati uh, had, I mean, uh, uh, Kansas City had a chance to touch the ball. Now Cincinnati just needs a field goal, right? That's the rules, right? So you're giving them a short field with that interception. It is not equal to a punt because you have to believe a punt. You would have put them inside the twenty. You would imagine, okay? You would imagine they would have been inside the twenty. Now you got to go. You know, 60 yards maybe, um, good 50 yards, you know, to be comfortable with a winning field goal, right? Um, with the interception, now you're saying only maybe 25 yards, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they got more than that. <laughs> they got more than what they needed, right? But with the kicker that they have, right, the, the young guy from Florida, um, I think he would have hit, uh, you know, I, I would have been comfortable if I was on their team with a 55-yard field goal. He's consistently hit those. So I would have been comfortable with a 55-yarder. They got the ball thing around the 40. So now you're only talking, what, 20 yards? 30, what, what, about 25 yards? Something like that. And you, you're getting close to that range, you know. So that interception uh, may have looked like, hey, just a – it was just a punt. It didn't really hurt them. It was just, no, man. I think that really, really hurt them. I think it really hurt them. So, um, of course, I'm not going to blame the game on Mahomes, right? That's not what I'm doing. 
all right? But I'm just saying that that mistake really cost them. Uh, and I do think it was a costly mistake, right? I don't think it was just a, hey, it was third down, they was gonna punt the ball next play anyway. It was just a, an extension of a punt, no. It cost them because it they gave uh, Cincinnati good field get field position, a few plays, and they in field goal range. And <laughs> boy, they got down the field, and they they just imposed their will. They imposed their will, man, on that drive. That final drive was something to behold, right? Um, they mixed it up. Um, they didn't just rely on one thing. They played balanced offense. Got down the field and um, relied on a kicker who has been, you know, pretty consistent all year. And they are in the Super Bowl. They are in the Super Bowl. So, um, I am, uh, I, I just feel like this team has, I slept on them. I said at the beginning of the season that they had an opportunity, right, to, to get better. Uh, I didn't even see them in the playoffs, right? Um, as the season went on, you saw they were making a difference. You saw that they were really, you know, putting things together. They had opportunity. I said, you know what? This might be a playoff team. You go down the road even further, and I'm like, with some of the things that was happening in the division, this team has an opportunity to win this division. And at that point, I'm saying, okay, so you, you see them as a playoff team, but I never really saw them as a Super Bowl contender. I really didn't. I honestly didn't. But what I did say, I've been consistent about this with coming to, when, when I talk about this team, that A, the, the confidence that Morrow and Chase brings to this team is a difference. It's a difference maker. It changed the culture. The defensive players they brought in uh, in the offseason, okay? Um, two of them were Saints players. Um, uh, I'm not going to get bogged down in, the, in their names. I forget their names right now. Um, I know Bell. Bell is Von Bell. Von Bell is a big time leader. And I think he really helped this uh, the defensive backfield. Uh, Eli Apple, look, I, I'm not high on Eli Apple, but he didn't he didn't cost them. I just put it like that. He didn't cost them, right? But um he I'm not saying he's one of the guys, but there was a defensive lineman they brought from the Saints also. I forget his name right now. Um starts with an H. I can't think of his name right now. But just those two guys, and so there were some other other moves they made too. But it changed the culture of that defense. And it changed the culture of this team. This team had a had an attitude that we are capable. We're not gonna quit and we're gonna see where this thing goes. And we're not gonna be afraid of the moments. And all season long, playing big games against the Ravens, beating Kansas City in Kansas City when everyone counted them out, okay? The numerous other games they played where they were basically counted out or just, you know, pretty much a coin toss, hey, it can go either way. They have played this whole season with an attitude of, why not us? Let's see what happens. Let's do our best and let's see what happens. Now you can say that about a lot of teams, but I'm just saying, they, they meant it and they felt it. You can just feel it. You can feel it building all season long. And look at them now. They're in the Super Bowl. And I don't think anyone could have predicted this. I think people in Cincinnati couldn't predict this. I think the best they would have imagined for this team was that they were going to get into the playoffs. But that's why you play the games. That's why this is not done on paper. You know, that's why it takes two men battling each other at each position and the best man win. And regardless of the situation, regardless of what situation you put uh, Cincinnati in this year, they answered the bell. So congratulations, Cincinnati. Uh, I look forward to seeing what happens in the Super Bowl. I'm not gonna count you out. 
I'm not making pr predictions right now, but just like I didn't count you out against KC, I didn't pick you. I did not pick you. I'm not going to sit here and say I picked you, but I warned people that this team was not to be played with. This team was not to just be counted out. Now that part I was right about. I didn't pick you. I didn't think I didn't think you your defense had enough to stop uh, Mahomes. Mahomes was playing at a different level, and I just didn't think, you know, that you was gonna stop him. But you did. That second half in overtime, you stepped up. And you have to feel good about how you performed and what you did. So congratulations to your Super Bowl. All right. So let's go to the other game, NFC. So um, this game kind of went the way I thought it would go. Um, I got the prediction right. I got the keys to this game right. Um, the big difference in this game, the bottom line, was that um, as much as the 49ers dealt with this defensive line early in this season, the chickens came to roost. <laughs> okay. Um, this defensive line dominated. They simply dominated this game. That's there's no other ways of putting it. You can you can you can look at the Rams offense, you can look at um the defensive backs for the Rams, um lack of efficiency at the quarterback position for, for the 49ers, um Debo Samuels not getting off and, and dominating this game. You could put anything else you want to put out there as the keys to their victory. It the buck stopped at those five linemen. Because it did in the change, right? But those guys at the line, the defensive line for the Rams, won this game for them. Kept them in the game and won the game for them. They affected Debo. They affected Jimmy G. Um, the other running back, I forget his name right now, Mitchell. Okay? None of these guys was able to really get off. Yeah, they made plays here and there, but I mean, they would have had to dominate or really, really be efficient. I mean, just look at it. What was the stats on on um, um, Debo Samuel's running the ball? 20, 26 yards. You needed 126 yards from that cat. You see what I'm saying? That just shows you right there. They did not allow this guy to get off. Mitchell, 20 yards on 11 carries. Okay? Uh, Debo Samuel, 7 yards on 26 carries. That run, They shut that running game down. Okay, um, so you say, well, maybe Debo got off on the passing game, right? Well, four, four catches, 72 yards. That's not the kind of game you needed from him. And it's not just his fault. It's the defense. It's the defense that caused that to, to occur. Um, no one, no one went off on this 49ers team. Now, they got the lead. They got they they actually had the lead. I think at one point they had a ten point uh, lead, right? But you just felt I just felt that the Rams ever got going on offense, that this defensive line was going to make the difference because they were not going to allow Jimmy G to have an efficient game. They put pressure on him constantly, and boy, I. I that's the MVPs. You could look at uh, OBJ and some of his tough catches he made. Great job, right? Cooper Cup made some fantastic plays, right? Uh, who's the quarterback? Um, got dog. I forgot his name. Regardless, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. He wasn't the key to this game. Okay, he was not the key to this game. The offense did their job and got what they needed to win. But the key to this victory was that defensive line. And I told you guys that was gonna be the biggest problem. 
the biggest problem for the 49ers in this game was going to be how well they handled that defensive line. And they just couldn't do it. That's what that's where this game was won and lost. It was right there in them trenches. So um Stafford, that's what, that's what I forgot. Stafford uh had a had a pretty decent game. Um nothing spectacular, right? But he didn't need to be spectacular. He just needed not to lose the game for them. That's what he needed. Now, now um, you know, I don't know. I mean, hey, things happen. But that, in the first half, man, that interception, uh, when they were going in, uh, you, you kind of felt they were going in. That, you know, you got to figure points at least. But, you know, I just felt like, you know, a touchdown right here was going to, you know, make a big statement. What he does, <laughs> nice pick. <laughs> nice pick, uh, Stafford. But um, despite that, he played an efficient enough game um, to keep him in the game, and he made the plays when it was needed to get a victory. And that's all. Look, what's required? That's what's required, right? <laughs> all right? You want a quarterback that can make plays when they need to, not lose you the game. And when you have a defense, particularly a defensive line, that can dominate the way these guys dominate, it's a winning formula, man. That's a winning formula. Now, I don't think they ran the ball that well. Um, let's look at these stats right quick. Um, so, on paper, Stafford looked good. 300 yards, two touchdowns, interception. Uh, Akers didn't um, have a fantastic game. 48 yards on 20, I mean, on uh, 13 carries. Um, Cup had a big game. Uh, Beckham had a big game. You know, both of them over 100 yards. Uh, very, very good game for both those guys. Very good game. I mean, that's that's the kind of game you, you look for. Um, the turnovers for the Rams was minimum. Um, it was they wasn't costly, right? But um, you just had a dominant, dominant uh, defensive line. That's why they're in the Super Bowl. And uh, how ironic, man. We had uh, all these years. You didn't have anybody hosting a Super Bowl, you know, in, in their home stadium, right? And now we get it back to back. <laughs> and we get it back to back, right? So um, this game kind of went the way I predicted. Rams got the victory uh, off the back of that defensive line. And they, it's going to be very, very interesting. Uh, I'm not making predictions. I'm going to wait. That's way down the road, right? But just on the outset, how will the Bengals handle this dominant defensive line? That's going to be the biggest question all week. You know, that's, that's going to be the biggest question. Because if they can, they have an opportunity. Just like I told you, the KC game, that was the biggest issue. If they was going to, if that defensive line for Kansas City wasn't going to affect Morrow, I mean Burrow, they were going to have an issue. Hey, I'm just, I'm just the messenger, man. I'm just the messenger. <laughs> the tape don't lie. That's all I'm gonna say. The tape does not lie. Again, if the Rams allow Murrow, Burrow, I don't know why I keep saying Murrow. If the Rams allow Burrow to get to these guys, excuse me, man. If he allows, if he, if they allow him to um, get to his weapons, they have a lot of weapons, man, and he knows how to get him in the right spot. If nothing else, they're persistent. <laughs> he knows how to get him in the right spot. Uh, he knows how to get the ball down the field. So that's gonna be interesting. So that's just um, one of the things we're gonna look at uh, going down the road. So. Congratulations to the Rams. You did a great job uh, closing out, getting this, this NFC championship. Again, congratulations, congratulations to the Bengals for your ASC championship. This should be a very interesting game. It really should. I look forward to a good, a good Super Bowl. Very, I look forward to a very competitive Super Bowl. I really do. So um, before I end this, um, you know, you know you guys, I'm a Raiders fan. Uh, we had some interesting moves uh, over the weekend. Um, and I'll be honest with you, initially, 
I was extremely disappointed uh, because I had other guys in mind. I really wanted them to go in a different direction, right? And they didn't, right? They um, went to the New England um, family tree, okay? You got um, their, um, uh, um, can't even say it right, right now, general manager, right? Um, and McDaniels. So, I have to admit, when I heard McDaniels even being considered, it turned my stomach. It really did. I, I didn't. <laughs> I, I'm still. I, it really, to be honest with you, it's taken me a minute to really find a good spin to this because I really did not want McDaniels. I, I promise you, I did not want McDaniels as our coach. Okay, uh, Ziegler as a uh, uh, um, as the um, GM. Okay, uh, I didn't mind him, but I was thanking other guys. Right, um, I didn't like. I didn't dislike Dobbs. Um, I kind of thought he had the inside track, and I kind of liked. Um, what, when, when he became the front runner, right? I started looking him up and finding out what he was about, you know? And um, <laughs> I gotta be honest with you, what I was happy about <laughs> was that he didn't like McDaniels. <laughs> so when I saw that, I said, hey, you know what? Uh, mm, that might be a good thing. <laughs> but I wasn't big on Dobbs, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I didn't mind him. Right when I started looking into him, I said, "Okay, he might be a good a good choice." Right, but then when um, I heard that Ziegler was really gonna, you know, he was the front runner, and it really it came like that. I mean, it was almost instant, right? Um, and you know, I like I said, I was looking for some other guys to get in, um, but it didn't happen. You got Ziegler, uh, Ziegler, and when they got him. I like and the rumors of uh, McDaniel's was swirling around. I'm like man, I don't want that cat. I really didn't want that cat. You know, what he did in Denver, uh, I didn't. I didn't like. Right, the way he left Indianapolis at the altar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Taking a job, then backing down, backing out of it. I didn't like that. Right, and I viewed him as kind of like, um, just like, uh, you know. I gave Belichick more of the credit for what, you know, the team's success in New England than, than uh, Daniels, right? I felt Daniels was just a, you know, I don't know, figure piece, so to speak, you know, um, this whole lit position, so to speak. Um, and I'm still not high on it. But after looking into the situation, after researching a little bit, I feel a lot better, okay? What I do like, now, I told you things I don't like. Like, Zingler, I don't really have a huge opinion about him, but he was part of um, the drafting process and the signing of players that I really appreciate, okay? They are not, New England has always been a type of team, and you know Belichick is gonna get most of the credit, but he saw it first, and he's part of it, right? They don't oversign play, they don't, ha they don't reach um, for names, they reach for ability. They reach for talent. Okay, they they look at the player, not the name on the back of the jersey. Okay, I like that because you find quality players in second and third, fourth rounds. Okay, that's where you build your team. That first round. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna do a video when we get to the draft. I'm going to do a video about how disappointed I have been with what the Raiders did, with all that draft capital they had. You know, that's why, you know, Mayock and Gruden, and particularly Gruden, I'm happier no longer in the building. Because I don't think they did a good job with that, that high end. They, they did a decent job on the lower end. Third, fourth, fifth rounds, they hit constantly, right? But that we had a lot of draft capital at the top end. Of, of these last three drafts 
and we just fumbled the ball. I apologize, guys. This truck is, I'm going to the shop. <laughs> so hopefully you ain't got to deal with that in these next few videos. So I apologize. But the Raiders did not do well at the top end when they had all that draft capital with the, the trades of, 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 uh, of Cooper and of, uh, of, of, of Khalil Mack, right? Uh, we did very well. Second, third, fourth rounds, fifth rounds, we hit. We hit big time, right? So that's what Ziegler has been, that's the culture he's been around. We're going to, you know, we're not, for one thing, New England didn't have top draft picks, or, you know, to have to, to have to screw up. So they had to live in that second, third, fourth round, in the meat of that draft. Right, and he's been part of that organization that has done well there. Okay, that that is well. That 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 um, plays out well. Or sounds good. Or a good. I don't know what I'm searching for. Um, a good strategy to have. I'm still not finding the right word I'm looking for. But anyway, we're gonna go with strategy. Okay, <laughs> that's the kind of strategy I, I think helps build a team okay so I feel good about that all right when I looked into Daniels I felt a little better when I really started looking into it now trust me man there's one thing I was happy about I was very happy that they got an offensive minded coach now I don't know what they're gonna do with Gus Bradley but my hopes are that he stays on the staff and he takes control of this defense. Because what I think he does very well, I think he recognizes the type of talent that he wants that fits his scheme. Okay? That's extremely important. You know, that is that is extremely important. He knows the kind of guys that he wants to play and fit his scheme. And I want to, and we have those players in place. Listen, this, he had one year, he had one draft, one offseason, one year to develop this defense. And it's dramatically different from the past three, four years. A dramatic difference in one year. I want to see that continue. I don't want to start from scratch. Starting from scratch may be great, but I see the, I see the path of what Gus is trying to do, and I'm on board with it. So the fact that they got an offensive coach, hopefully their next move is that they're going to announce they're going to continue with Gus at the defensive coordinator, and that we stay on that path, that this defense stays intact, and we and we continue down the path that we're going down. Because I think I see the formation and the formula of a great defense coming together. A few more years, I think this defense is going to really have, um, they're going to have to be reckoned with. So that's that's my hope. We'll see down the road uh, how that plays out. But that's the one thing I was happy about, that they hired an offensive-minded head coach. Hopefully we can keep Gus and he can, he can continue to control that defensive side of the ball. Okay. I know that's a lot to ask because a lot of general managers, a lot of head coaches like to pick their people, you know, especially their coordinators, right? But it has, it's not, it's not uh, un, un, unheard of. This has happened in the past. You've had head coaches and general managers come in and keep main components of the coaching staff in place, right? Um, but um, let's just hope that this occurs with our defense because I think that's what's, we're on the right path on the defensive side of the ball, okay? Now, on the offensive side, what I do like, now I, I, I told you things I don't like about McDaniels and I can't say it enough. I was hoping, man, I was hoping for some other guys. I really was. I had some guys on my list, man. I, and I, I did a video on that. You can go back and look at that. I was hoping for some other cats. It didn't happen, but okay. We got to deal with, look, I'm a Raider fan for life. Okay. I, I, I don't waver on that. I might not like moves. I didn't like when we hired Gruden. I wasn't doing videos back then, but three years ago, I promise you, if you was a Raider fan, if you knew me, 
And if we talked about it, I told you, I don't like, I did not like the move. I didn't, I heard, certainly didn't like the contract. That was about the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Giving a guy a 10 year tenure, a 10 year contract. That is, man, you gotta, look, you gotta, you have to give an incentive to a person to be, to do right. You can't just expect them, hey, I'm gonna do right because I say I'm gonna do right. No, prove it and put that money on the line. You know, four years, if you give a guy five years, you're showing him the confidence that you have in him. 10 years is absurd. That's what's absurd. And it costs him. It costs that, because look, we, we haven't heard the final numbers, but Gruden got paid. I know he got paid that money. He got paid most of it. If he didn't get paid all of it, he got paid most of it, if not all of it, okay? So it cost him. That was a very costly mistake for, uh, for this organization, right? So, um, so I was happy in the idea. I wasn't happy in Daniels because I have a lot of concerns. What he did in Denver and how he quit in uh, in Indianapolis, you know, before he even took, actually, he took the job and then never showed up, okay? Didn't like that. Bad character, you know, uh, I, I don't like that, okay? Don't take the job. If you got anything in your mind saying, this is not what I want, don't take the job. Don't commit to that team. You know what I'm saying? Bad, bad character means a lot to me. And that's a bad character trait. You quit on a team like that, okay? And I just saw Belichick as being the, the guy that really moved the pieces in New England. I didn't really give him enough credit, okay? But I just started looking at it. Hey, like I mentioned, I like the fact that he was an offensive-minded um, coach. Okay, I like that. Also, I started understanding. Um, I started looking at some of the things that he does well. All right. Um, I'm not going to say he's he has great imagination in his play calling, but it's not vanilla. It's not as predictable as um, our predecessor, you know. Um, I just, man, I thought our offense just lacked the imagination all year long, right? Hopefully that'll change. Two things I'm extremely encouraged by, okay, two things. Well, actually three things, I think about it. So, McDaniels is good at involving the slot wide receiver. He does not have to his his offenses does not have to have a dominant a dominant wide receiver. They play as a unit. And his slot receivers have all played very, very well. Who is our slot receiver? Uh Hunter Renfro. A very, very good slot receiver. Pro Bowl slot receiver, might I add. Okay? The other thing he does well, he involves his tight ends. We have two. We have probably top five in Waller. And Monroe is very capable backup. Probably one of the best backups. Okay. So the two things that he do well in the passing game, we have already in place. Okay. I'm going to do some things about free agency. There are some guys, I know a lot of people are talking about Adams. And trust me, I want Adams on my team. I would love to have Adams come to the Raiders. But what's going to be the cost? What is going to be the cost? And if he's going to hinder us from making other moves, then is he worth it? So as much as I want Adams as our number one wide receiver, and it's a bit, one of the biggest needs, there's some other needs we need, but one of the biggest needs, hey, we might not be able to afford it. What other number one, uh, 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 WR1 that's going to be out there? Okay? Uh, Adams is on everyone's list. I hear Allen Robinson is available. Okay? Another great number one wide receiver. Okay? He might come at a little better price. 
there's some other guys that are out there that if if you look at how McDaniels uses his wide receivers, he doesn't have to have a, a, a dominant number one. But there's a guy, that I'm, I'm, I'm going to mention his name, and look, I got this hat on for a reason. Not only because LSU put his put their trademark, or there's some, there's some key players on both sides of the Super Bowl, right? But in free agency, there's a guy that I, I want to start targeting. I didn't know he was going to be available. DJ, DJ Chark from the from from um, um, the Jaguars. I forgot about that cat. I didn't know he was available. I think he's going to be a free agent. I think he'll be unrestricted free agent. I think. I got to look that up again. That might be one of the best moves we make. If we make that move and get that cat, see, he's the kind of wide receiver that he has the speed, the size, the hands, the competitive nature. That, that ha He's not a dominant number one like Adams, but he's the type of, don he's the type of number one that, that uh, Daniels works well with. So if you can get somebody like DJ Charge, and he's not the only one, there's some other guys too, right? Um, if you can get a guy like him um, get another guy, perhaps in a, you know, in um, hey, look, Edwards is not a bad wide receiver. He's still young. He still has time to develop, but he would be a good number two. Zay Jones is going. To, hopefully, we can bring him back. I think he's a good backup, a good number four. Okay, but if you can get somebody like DJ Charge or make a make a move for Robinson, right? Um, I would love Adams on my team, but at what cost? You know what I'm saying? What cost, right? Uh, lock, not lock it. Uh, what's the other cat in um, Seattle? You know, somebody like that. There's a lot of options at wide receiver. And what McDaniel's does, he doesn't have to have a dominant number one to be successful. He's done very well with good players at wide receiver. We have a good running back. Um, we have two, right? So, I just feel like if we could shore up this offensive line, we need a right tackle. We need to go, and I don't want, I don't want to really go into the draft. I want a veteran right tackle. I want a veteran right guy. All right, that's what I want. All right, um, we need, some, we need, we need somebody stable. We need a veteran guy on that right. We already got a rookie playing guard on the right side. We need a veteran right tackle. So we need to go in free agency, shore up that right side. Okay? The left side is not going to be too bad. The left side is okay. I'm, I'm still okay with our center. Okay? So we could just go and get a quality. I mean, not quality. I want, I want one of the best right tackles. We do that. We get a quality wide receiver. We actually need two, okay? Shore up some of these other guys with their contracts, right? My opinion, I, you know, people don't agree with me. I think Carr should play out that on that 19 year, uh, 19 uh, million dollars, um, uh, the, the, the years left on his, on his contract, because it gives us a chance to build his roster. Now, if he's not happy with that, I, that's a fly in the ointment, you know? Because, look, we need to keep guys like Waller. We need to keep guys like uh, uh, Crosby. You know, we need to keep some of these guys. Haywood, uh, defensive back, we need to keep that guy, you know? But if we pay if we pay Carl $30 million, where the money going to come from? Where is the money going to come from? So, you play Carl in that 19, hopefully he's, you know, he's supposed to be a team guy, you know, he's supposed to be, a, 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 he wants to be a Raider for life, right? You, you, you got paid already, and that's what uh, uh, um, uh, Zingler, Zingler, that's, that's, that's the organization he came from, that's what their track record is, right? 
They don't overpay guys, especially when they have uh, years on their contract. So hopefully they can work something out with Carr, keep him on his 19. Hey, even if you want, ex if, he, if he take an extension and take a, 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 a Raider uh, discount for like maybe, you know, 21, 22 for three years, hey, I, I, I'll do that. But I'm not paying him 30 million. When I've already paid him once, I'm not paying him 30 million. And if he doesn't want to play, then we have to go to Plan B. We have to go to Plan B. That's all there is to it, you know. So, um, this was not the moves I was looking for. I I'm gonna say it. This is the third, fourth time I'm saying it. All right, Zingler was not the guy I was looking for. McDaniel certainly wasn't the guy I was looking for. But now that we have these cards, this is the cards we have to play with. I start looking into some things and I'm always gonna try to find that cup half full. So that's what I see. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I uh, hope you guys were entertained. I think we're looking uh, at a very, very competitive, very good um, Super Bowl. Uh, I think you got two teams. Hey, you're not going to come at this part of the season and, and be, you know, uh, have two duds. You have two capable teams, right? But I'm looking at two teams, man, that have uh, 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 exciting offenses, some defenses. We have a dominant defense in the Rams and a capable defense in Cincinnati. It all depends on who wants it more, who plays better, and who has a better game plan. And this is going to be interesting. Very, very interesting. So I think it's going to be a great way to, uh, to end the season. So, guys, I, I hope you guys was I hope you guys enjoyed your weekend. Hope you guys was enjoyed, enjoyed this video. Hope I was entertaining. Hope I added a little value to your day. Okay? <laughs> so, guys, like always in my videos, guys, take care of each other. Guys, love each other. And guys, be blessed. Ready Cab is out. Peace.